ain't never gon' back down. I want it now, and I ain't never gon' back down. I want it now, and I ain't never gon' back down. I am no regular citizen. No, nope. do you understand what you're witnessing? You cannot tell what the difference is. I want it all, and I'm winning it. Yeah. I do not care about opinions. Uh. Time to make a few decisions do it. So I can take a position I'ma go get it, I'm punching and kicking I keep on moving it out for me Just do it and stop by that talking to I'm not expressing no modesty I can't see nobody stopping me If there's a problem, I gotta solve it Straight to the top, I can't see myself falling I gotta grab it, there's no time for stalling Number one turn, it don't happen to us Now I'm fired up I'm sorry brother, your time's up I see the top and I climb up I came from the asses, I rise up Rise up, rise up series season continues as we go to nascar's biggest and fastest track this is talladega and this is the real sim racing full throttle cup series back on a monday night live on race spot tv we're happy that all of you are spending your first night of talladega week on the sim with us here live on race spot tv i'm your host joshua lee joining me alongside in the booth tonight is lorenzo bonder as the normal lead commentator and admin of the real sim racing full throttle cup series evan Pasoko heading home from family in hawaii and trying to get home to florida currently so hopefully he's watching us from american airlines flight going from dfw to tampa but lorenzo these drivers on the track are going to be almost taking flight the speeds they're going to reach here at talladega and how close they're going to be in the pack three wide maybe four wide we've got a decent sized field with us tonight and talladega always seems to provide the thrills whether it's rsr competition or outside of it whatever car you put on this course Absolutely, and you gotta love there and any car, whether it's gonna be a classic car, a more late model car, or even a modern car like we're running on the next gen, and it's always good racing, and we're always looking for that big one. We know it's coming, right, Josh? Eventually that thing is gonna come. The question is when, where, how many drivers will get involved, and uh, if that will breed more yellows uh, in the whole race. It's definitely not a matter of if, it is a matter of when, but 
currently on the schedule. We enter round seven tonight. Dover next week, then our first trip to Darlington, then the All-Star Night that'll be happening on May the 13th with Charlotte, Sonoma, Iowa, and more. Uh, Iowa being a first-time track as well for the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series, at least the Cup Series portion of Real Sim Racing, but very quickly going to start getting into those playoffs and into a couple of the tracks that we're going to visit for a second time this season, Daytona and Darlington to name two of those but the points right now not a big story surrounding them yet lorenzo still a bit of a ways to go before we cut off the top 16 for the playoffs but agno phillip four wins bradley burke and nazi major the only other two that have been able to put wins up on the board farinars nieto lariah all pretty safe on points but you go down to that cut line eric papadown jaron winemaster ross cato steve soa chris trepa liam sheen austin coop they're all very very close together surrounding p16 no absolutely you can you can kind of, be, kind of basically say from p12 all the way down to hell i'm i'm putting dylan into this okay i'm i, I cannot believe i'm saying this but i even putting dylan in on the spot over here to try to make it through into the playoffs is anybody's game right it's no man's land so everything can happen the the shift of the races can like dynamically go from one one area to the another that's what makes it exciting to be on that bubble and try to make it in or not like I mentioned, still a decent amount of ways left to go, but you never want to waste time, especially when coming to that playoffs and qualifying currently going on with two minutes remaining on the clock. And we just saw Andrew Freenars take uh, his second time across the stripe and he falls into P number one. Now up to fifth goes Ross Cato. Agnel Phillip is on track. He'll be coming to lap number two this time. Let's see where the number 94 is going to go. And he goes all the way underneath that yellow line. And yes, that is legal, at least here in qualifying. And it's going to do him some good by two one thousandths of a second. Agno Phillip goes to the top of the board as we check in with Maverick Davis, who fl slots into P12. Brandon Gas slots into P7 on the board as the first 18 cars take a time in qualifying with one minute left and nobody else on the track doesn't look like we're gonna get anybody else taking a fast lap here in qualifying everybody else will work their way back to the pit lane yeah absolutely but still what is insane is top three separated by only 500 uh, five thousandths of a second right from philip to freeners is two thousandths of, of a second from freeners to peterson is three thousandths of a second to harrison is about ten hundreds of a second it, 11 it, but give, even put 10 what the heck but it's so close that's that's what makes Talega enticing but the question is will this translate to clean racing among everybody because we know Talega is going to be had to get at the, at the start uh be in uh i think Talega is just like daytona it doesn't matter where you uh you know get placed in the beginning it's where you finish that's where you want to be at the final laps how close to the lead pack to the lead you you are the average amount of cautions per race in the last uh, 10 years of real sim racing full throttle cup series action dating all the way back to the uh, first season of 2012. The average cautions per race at Talladega has been three. Are we going to fall under that number? Are we going to fall over that number? Only time is going to tell. But we are ready to take a look at that starting grid as we get ready to go racing tonight on a Monday in the full throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series. And on the pole, once again, no surprise here, Agnel Phillip, best of the rest as the 94 will sit on the pole position. Andrew Freenage, who has been knocking at the door and trying to beat Agnel Phillip before, he sits to the outside of the front row, Cam Patterson, Cody Harris sharing row two. Thomas George, Ross Cato going to round out the first three rows. Jaron Winemaster, Kyle Trudell, seventh and eighth. Brandon Gass and Grant Davis will round out your top ten. Eric Papanow and Dalton Randolph in the number 26 will be in the first six rows with Minazzi Major, Brett Larson, 13th and 14th. Braden Whitaker, Mike Maddox in P16. Maverick Davis and DeAndre Kane rounding out the first nine rows on the grid. Matt Danson will share row 10 with Mike Michael Oria, first drivers to not elect to put down a time in qualifying. Sam Nieto and Austin Coop will share row 11. Bradley Burke and Philip Radajic going to round out your first 12 rows. And rounding out the field, Steve Soa and Dylan Coyle going to be shotgun on the field in the 13th and final row 
on the grid as we get ready to go racing here from talladega and tonight not going to be a terribly long race lorenzo of course the very typical half distance race as opposed to the full length nascar cup series that'll go racing for 188 laps we go racing for 94 tonight and all the normal rsr rules fixed setup zero fast repairs four tire sets and 100 percent fuel fuel capacity on these cars but lorenzo that highlighted yellow text at the bottom there three overtime attempts that's really what you need to be focusing on because the three out of the last five full throttle cup series races at talladega have all been decided in an overtime finish and uh and looking for the perspective of things like I, we know this agnel phillips show he has back-to-back -back wins this season already and now uh he actually has a back back to wins in richmond and now texas and everybody trying to scramble to get within that top 16. i i'm sure uh, as much as i don't like it i think this is gonna go three overtime attempts there is a look at agnel phillip as he gets started on his pace lap behind the official iRacing pace nice car nice very nice championship belt that he has earned now with his two championships in the full throttle real sim racing cup series looking for a third belt this season and he's gonna have to get through talladega and yes of course we talk about this race lorenzo being kind of that wild card kind of anybody can win but you do need to master this place to become a champion we will come back here in the playoffs in the middle of one of our playoff rounds uh, this track of course very similar to how it races to daytona so you need to be good at this track if you want to be a champion and agonal phillip is the reigning race winner here from the playoff race in october yeah so uh, it's it's about that thing of plate racing right uh josh that makes the, this uh, interesting some people don't like it but they did do quite well in it some people like it but they they kind of struggle with the big one looming large at any given point so uh let's see how this one will fare because uh i know it's early on in the season but still i think this early on is so hectic with people being so close and things undecided that i think uh, the level of aggressiveness towards the end of the race will be absolutely huge gonna need to be aggressive and that's what we've seen in the past here in the full throttle real sim racing cup series at talladega you have to use the aggression and Field of 26 behind the official iRacing pace car as we get ready to go racing here from NASCAR's biggest and fastest track. It says on the wall, this is Talladega, and this is one of the most unique tracks, even dating back to when it was built. They were trying to figure out a way to sell more tickets towards turn number one as opposed to Daytona, where all the tickets were being sold right at the start finish line in the middle of the tri oval. Well, their solution was to just move the start finish line as opposed to right in the middle of the front straightaway or in the middle of the tri oval as normal. It is down to towards turn number one and agnel phillip will lead the field to the geico restart zone and for the first time tonight we are underway from virtual talladega in round seven of the full throttle real sim racing cup series in 2024. Already three wide as we race down the super stretch and it'll be Andrew Freenage who gets the outside line moving and gets Cody Harris moving as well. They move down to the bottom of the racetrack to cover off the inside line as everybody works their way up to speed. That three wide in the back is kind of frazzled out. They move their way majority to now two by two as they work their way back through the trial for the first time under speed. That outside line still being led by the 12 of Ross Cato. Everybody else falls in two by two back to turn one yeah but it's kind of interesting that second line is not working as in as they probably wanted in tandem right in comparison to the first line everybody in the first line just being faster now number six of uh of thomas george goes up into the top line he's gonna go on the on the up above and try to get that second line running and maybe go, go up a few spots but uh, no work whatsoever from the second line no response uh on his behalf now, here we go. George stays up top right behind Ross Cato as that field blows through turn number four. 
Barinars takes the lead early, and that was with help from Cody Harris. But I think the pack is starting to get a little bit antsy. As that was a move to the outside from, it looked like, Brett Larson at the front of this field. He peeked out to the outside, and now driver Dalton Randolph is going to get shuffled out in that number 28. It was that 51 of Brett Larson that peeked out of line, but now looking like that might have been the wrong decision. Being glad that he moved back into line because the outside line prevailed off of turn two. Give Thomas George the lead with Ross Cato all over his back bumper. Two Ford Mustangs working together. Make it three at the front of the field as Andrew Freenars will clear the outside line to stay in third. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, uh, the the one who has to do the charge up above is Cal Trudell. He's leading that pack, and uh, everything can get a little get a little bit shuffled out. The the waving of the car shot to get you know, uh, uh, you know, try to what would, what would you call it, Josh? Measuring the distance of the car ahead of you within uh, within the one the bottom train or the top train. What 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 would be the proper technique uh, to call that uh, waving of the cars? I feel like it's a lot of just trying to see what's in front of them, right? Because when you're tucked in behind a driver, as Andrew Freenars wants to get a good look at the front of the field, he moves up to the outside line with help from the 7 of Kyle Trudell, who gives him a big shot to the back bumper and move the 88 back up to the lead. But you can't see anything, right, Lorenzo, when you're tucked up behind another car. A lot of these drivers, especially you go back to the middle of the pack, uh, Cam Patterson, Manansi Major, even the uh, Battle Beaver machine that was just peeking out there of, of Agnel Phillip in the number 94, you can't see anything with five, six, seven cars in front of you. You're just trying to get any sort of view at the front to see what's going on as you possibly can. Absolutely, it just, it, it's also a little bit difficult. Like we saw at the beginning, like when Maverick Davis kind of like broke off the pack, made it a little bit of tree wide on the back stretch, and uh, and and made everything a little more, a little bit more. What would you say? The heart wrenching, you know, heart stopping among everybody. There was a little bit of a three wide moment right at the back. I think that was uh, there. Actually, is a three wide down at the back. I'm just trying to pick up which car the thing that goes up to. Philip and uh, other cars around as they go down below the line, really making it pro potentially into the, the no man zone where we can actually get a yellow flag. That was a little sketchy there going into three. That was yep. about two cars underneath the, that yellow line, which in the real world, that is a double yellow line where the field cannot run. But here on iRacing, it's pretty much fair game as long as you come up clean. And we are three wide through the trioval. The 99 gets loose in the middle. And everybody else has a bit of a che checkup on the inside line. And this is getting dicey on lap number six. Shove it from Radajik in the middle of the pack. Three wide for second, almost contact for third. Uh, how did they not get into the yellow flag boggles my mind there's a little bit of contact a little bit of a time loss i think that's ross i want to say maybe ross Cato that lost a little bit of ground moved all the way back to, to p18 but uh for one second i thought uh, I, we were going to get our first yellow flag of the race here at josh Cato in the 12 dumped out of the pack. It looked like the 28 of Cody Harris also dub dumped out of the pack. Not wanting to deal with any of that hard racing this early on. As we go on to lap number six, the field is now kind of looking like a practice pack. Like one that you would see in free practice where everybody's just kind of straggled out, strung out to try and get built back up. But this has changed at least how the pack is going to look for now. That inside line will prevail and help on the back bumper from looks like the 30 of Mike Maddox, who now goes into fifth. He's got Manazzi Major in tow. They go right by Radajik in the 99, who's going to fall in the middle of the pack. And another line starting to move up top. That is going to be Bradley Burke in the 19, who wants to make stuff happen with Dalton Randolph. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know. I don't know you, but I... I, I... If, if I'm in, in you know, in this plate racing, you know, and it's early on, I know positioning itself is looking into Cody Harris on the bottom line, trying to get closer to the car in the front. That's the number 10 of uh, Cam Patterson. The thing is, don't you want to be working together on a bigger line instead of, you know, going around, slingshotting around people on the top line because you're not collaborating. You're just losing ground to the, to the guys that are actually working on that inside pack. I don't know. It doesn't seem as more strategy, but then again, I'm not an NASCAR specialist in play racing. Just saying.
I mentioned that yellow line down there that in the iRacing service, at least outside of league competition, slightly seen as fair game as long as you don't wreck anybody while you're coming back up onto the racetrack to blend. But race control, jo Joshua Mendoza with us tonight from race control has let the drivers know that you cannot advance your position under that yellow line per real sim racing cup series rule book. So we won't see any passes made underneath that yellow line, at least legal passes made under there. Everything has to be up above that yellow line on the racing surface. And just like that, Lorenzo, we're back to two by two. As quickly as that pack was strung out, we are set to put nine laps behind us this time by the start finish line. And we're right on back to two by two. That is Mike Maddox giving a big shove to Austin Coop, who has commentated some races for us here on race spot tv in the full throttle real sim racing cup series he goes to the front in his toyota camry with the 30 in tow now yeah, the 30 is going to tell him on the outside line and try and go for the lead yeah not only has is going to try to go for the lead he actually has lead going around into the into that trial but still side by side they're going to retain but the lead is going to go to maddox with about no, did it go to maddox though because i think coop will retain about five thousands on the second on the line Three by three again, at least four rows deep. Leading that middle line is Coop. Outside line goes Rada Jick, who just started his real sim racing career at Texas Motor Speedway one week ago. He goes to the lead with help behind from the 12 of Ross Cato. Cato all the way to the back, went out of the pack when they were getting a little bit too antsy for his liking, and now is right back up here at the front trying to get that race lead away. And Cato, of course, a regular of the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series. Very familiar to see his face and see him racing here on a Monday night. And in the last, of course, his career in the Real Sim Racing Cup Series has never gone to victory lane at Talladega, at least early on in this race, Lorenzo, showing that he's got what it takes to go to victory lane here as he sits P2. Yeah, looking really good, really uh, comfortable. As you can see, there is no flinching whatsoever from Cato. He's going to push the the 99 around a fra and uh, what is interesting as well looking for the perspective of drivers this is one thing that we see in the e nascar is the i think the can you say resurgence of the surge of the formula like wheels being driven around the uh, you know drag to wheel drives and such i feel like that was started by bobby Zelensky in the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series because it has become kind of a thing for these drivers to do. A lot of drivers swapping to the Formula Rim. Uh, of course, still have a couple of drivers here in the Real Sim Racing Cup Series that are running those NASCAR-style Fanatec wheels and, and the like. Uh, but seeing more and more of that competitive side, they're choosing the Formula Rims over anything else. And I got to say, I agree with it. It just feels a little bit too weird to me. Oh, I don't oh. know. Oh, they're wrecking. Here comes Andrew Farinar's up the track. He wrecks into Austin Coop. And the first yellow flag of the night is out. Nieto tries to avoid it. Andrew Farinar and Austin Coop end up with damage. And I want to say those are the only two that did. But that is big damage to the 88. Yeah, some would argue this might be a race ending uh, damage for the number 88. I saw the car is getting a little bit loose coming into the bank stretch, but uh, I want to look at the replay more in, in depth. What caused the, you know, foreigners to go loose on the back stretch? Because I could have seen it in, proper, in a proper angle. Looks a little bit to me like that might have been Austin Coop giving a little bit too much of a shove. There's Coop to the back bumper of the 88. He had nowhere to go. Yep. Completely boxed in. Is that Philip that got also pressed in as well? We'll grab another look at it here. Grab first and on board with Austin Coop. I'm very, I really want to see if this might have been him giving a shove to the 88. There's one, there's two. Defrina should know where to go, but Austin Coop couldn't yeah. see if anybody was in front of the 88 either. Yeah, none whatsoever. Basically, completely completely blind by the entirety of the action and unfortunate uh, to see that happen but then again it's solid thing it's play racing it's close and it's gonna get violent every single time as you get into car bumping first yellow flag so we know that got damage to the front end of andrew freenars in the 88 so we're expecting him to come down into the pit lane anybody else that is going to be takers on the pit lane it will be 
Kato in, Radijic in, and the entire lead pack is going to come into the pit lane. They have tire sets, of course, four available in the pit lane to them. This is obviously not a track where tire wear is really a fat factor. I'm not sure if they can make it all the way to the end on fuel. That might be the strategy some of these drivers are going for, especially with maybe more cautions on the horizon, but this is everybody down into the pit lane and fuel only for Kato. He is going to go out and with a considerable margin over anybody else. Eric Papanow will be next out. Then Minazzi Major, Jaron Winemaster, Maverick, Davis, and more. But as far as the drivers that either took uh, two tires, no tires, the first driver I'm seeing that possibly took four, 14 seconds in the box for Radajik in the 99, who will sit sixth. Interesting, but I don't think it's going to be a massive effect in terms of grip and, and speed itself when we get to green flag. I think it is just, you know, being in a safer spot maybe for the long run if we go green flag all the way, right, for a potential pit stop. But still, uh, good strategy from Kato. Aggressive out of the gate. That's what we like to say. So Kato will lead the way to begin tonight's action here from T Talladega. And I'm interested to see what else goes on with Ross Cato and trying to hold on to that lead as well. How long he's going to be able to do it, especially with some hungry drivers behind. Eric Papanow sits behind him, who uh, hasn't gone to victory lane, at least in recent memory. Minazzi Major, who earned one of their first victories at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway earlier on this season. And of course, once you win one, Lorenzo, you want to win more. So he's looking for more victories. Jaron Wymaster, Maverick Davis rounds out the top five. How about Radajek, who has an opportunity to win in their second race? We mentioned anybody can win here at Talladega, and we're seeing that already at the start when championship leader and championship favorite Agnel Phillip after the pit stops goes down to P7 and has lost six positions from where he started the race in first. And it looks like he's going to bring it back down into the pit lane for stop number two you gotta just gonna put more fuel in the car not a bad strategy i think at this point you you try to run down the laps on your head and uh you're gonna try to minimize any potential you know long run damage on, on the, the other cars and see if the other cars are also competitive and can actually get a uh, train going potentially getting an, an, an overcut as the race goes on Phillips already been back to the front in this mm. race. So I, I fully believe that he can make his way back up to the front. Give him some time. I still have over 70 laps to go in this race as they'll double file back up, getting ready to go back under the green flag. Cato and Major, your top two. Winemaster, Radijic, Patterson, top five, Mike Maddox, Brandon Gass, Thomas George, Brett Larson, and Kyle Trudell through your top 10. Out of that wreck that happened, Andrew Farinaj is now one lap down and still in the pit lane trying to get damage repaired. Everybody else is back on the racetrack and is in the pack ready to take the green flag the only other driver that is currently out of this race is matt danson not sure what happened to matt danson uh, maybe see if we can grab an update on what exactly went down but he has been out of this race uh for now about 11 laps and looks like he has ducked out of the race server as well so he will stay in the pit lane for the remainder of the evening austin coop takes claim of that wreck so he will get an end of the longest line penalty to start all the way at the tail end of the pack. Ready to go back under the green flag. 15 laps behind us onto lap number 16 of the evening from the virtual Talladega Super Speedway in the full throttle real sim racing cup series. It's Cato and Major on the front row. How long is that going to last? A very, very aggressive first stint leading into the first yellow flag of the night. How aggressive are they going to stay? Ready on the loud pedals again as we go back into the Geico restart zone. And we are back underway here from Virtual Talladega as Kato gets a great start. Rockets himself to the front of the pack. 
And now Munasi trying to also follow suit as the top line. I think he gets a little bit more work together. As now the 99 will push. Fra is going to push Munasi Major into the lead. And now what does the number 82 do in this instance? As now Fra into that inside line working for the lead as well. 99 back to the bottom. 82 up top. Side by side into three. Patterson with a big shove though to the 82. He'll rocket himself. Rockets Brandon Gas all now to the front of this field. Gas goes low to try and grab that race lead two by two as the fight is upstairs as Thomas George makes a big move to the outside to take it three wide. Does he get any help? None yet, and it looks like it's going to be none for the moment. Thomas George in the six is going to fall back on the outside line. Yeah, the only reason the number six survived a little bit is because of the side draft, but now it comes into the turn number one and two. It is just going to get worse. So as soon as he dropped by, I think he lost about six, seven, six, seven positions total. Now, I think now he's a six car back in that top lane. Whole pack two by two with gas in the lead. Radicic with a big shove to the back bumper of that number 20. Major leads the outside. Winemasters in this group. Mike Maddox is back in this group. Everybody two on two as gas leads the way with Radicic trying to clear that outside line. Doesn't get there by the time they reach the start finish line as mainly with Cam Patterson all over the back bumper of that number 82 in front. And that brings up a good topic to talk about with these NASCAR next-gen cars, Lorenzo. Yes, technically speaking, in the aerodynamics, all of these vehicles are equal. However, in mm -hmm. bump drafting, they are anything but. Ford Mustang, very, very flat nose. Toyota Camry, very, very flat nose. As much as they have tried to flatten the nose of the Chevy Camaro, it is still a point. They push worse than the Toyota Camrys and the Ford Mustang. So you're going to see a lot of these Camry drivers and a lot of these Mustang drivers pushing and shoving as hard as they can. And you're going to see a lot of Chevy Camaros taking those pushes and taking those shoves. Absolutely. They're going to they're gonna get their most abuse. And the problem is, the, it, it, in a play racing like this, the one thing you really don't want to get is loose, right, uh, Josh? Especially for those Camaros. I, dri I drive a Camaro on the Cup Series. Uh, whenever I drive eight glasses, Fry is going to go back into the lead on gas again. He's laying shot at himself. He'll tear that outside line. But Nazi Major is going to push through, blocking the line on the inside. Oh, and here he gets time. Up into the pack. Is this the big one? Ross Cato is in it, trying to avoid all that he can. Cam Patterson's in it. Mike Maddox, Manazzi Major. Um. That was a big wreck at the front of the field. I'm not sure what happened at the front move made to late let's check in of course hearing not a great block as well from a couple of the drivers in the pack let's see Radajik down low he got loose I think he made that move a little bit too quick yeah not only that but I think once he came into uh, the back of the leader in the, in the bottom pack I think that was just you know getting washed out and unfortunately, the car goes around. The, the car is not straight. These are uh, both light cars. You, you kind of have a little, you need a little bit of technique and luck for you to be in the, in the proper lane. And gas just spuns around completely and gets uh, demolished in the process right after. Big hit from Adrian, the 82. Mike Maddox, Cam Patterson, Sam Nieto just getting a small piece of it at the end there. You could argue half of the grid got involved. One, two, three, four, five. Nowhere for a lot of drivers to go. Yeah. Easily half of the grid got involved into this. Wow. Everybody else going to make another trip into the pit lane. Radijic, of course, for damage repair after getting involved in that wreck. 
Not sure how many drivers ended up with damage or any sort of even small damage out of that one. Of course, new damage model on iRacing. You gotta watch out for just those small impacts that end up with bodywork shedding or uh, especially with these next-gen cars, the tow link uh, getting knocked out. DeAndre Kane looks like he stays out on the racetrack here. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it my impression or Kane was saying out a little bit of a bum move from the number 90 right there? But uh, it, I think Kane was one of those guys that, uh, you know, trying to get into the lead, but I think he was just biding his time, you know, trying, you know, to find that proper opening for him to get through at the Alabama track and uh, now to get an opportunity that the fact that uh, everybody else is coming in for repair, a little bit of repair right here and there, a little bit of feel right there. Uh, I don't know who's putting tires, but uh, it's a right opportunity for the number 90 to go through. Seeing if maybe we can get a couple more replays of what happened in that wreck, because there was a lot of drivers that also ended up avoiding that wreck, albeit very, very narrowly. Thomas George being one of them. But this has now turned at least the field as we see it on its head because we have deandre kane that stayed out winemaster pit whitaker pit philip is back in the top five and fourth bradley burke sits fifth but you look down this field i mean nieto is catching up to the back he definitely got damage mike maddox austin coop gas major they're all trying to catch up and uh, gas and major still in the pits how much damage do they have and can they even get all of it repaired and get to a point where they're even going to be able to run in the pack as well nope um i can tell you from the fact that gas uh actually lost his bonnet and also lost the front bumper you got to look on the replay i think that's uh george right there that actually was one of the first on the scene you're going to see the all the chaos is soon right in front of him. Bonk. Oh, and Bonk. A, a big set second hit there as well. That, of course, on Thomas George happening in front of him. I don't know who that was. Somebody went straight through the grass and then right back up into the pack. Which is insane. I think that was Brandon but... Gas. It was Gas because Gas actually got shoved back by... Um by fra fra pushed him into the grass he lost the bonnet of the car uh lost the front bumper i think he got hit the safe barrier on the inside and then got bounced back in track just one like more that. replay this is focusing on gas big wreck on top major comes down gas has no control over the car right here and no, right up none. into trudel and kato who tried to miss it Oof, and then Trudell, who's that he, that he caught as a, uh, as a collateral? Um, Dylan Coyle. He didn't, oh, he didn't Dylan. hit, he didn't hit decoil too hard. Uh, Coyle was able to save it, but, uh, nevertheless, still a bit of a choke slam there at the apron of turn three. But, another caution under our belts uh nobody claiming uh, responsibility for that caution so that will go to post-race admin review and of course uh, whoever was deemed at fault by the admins uh, that will be made aware in the post-race penalties after this race is all said and done 22 laps completed we get ready to go back to racing with deandre kane and jaron winemaster on the front row double file through the entire field and we will go racing with about a quarter of this race done and still a long long way to go until that checkered flag will fly got co restart zone back underway at talladega kane and winemaster lead the field across the stripe Who that just who that made the swap? I saw George and I think Burke that made it the swap into the top and bottom lanes. That bottom lane is starting to get a lot more help. The outside line 
has the shove. Thanks to Agnel Phillip, who is all over the back bumper of Jaron Winemaster. Cody Harris is in tow. Maverick Davis trying to follow that group in. He won't clear DeAndre Kane to the bottom. And Winemaster gets loose off the nose of Agnel Phillip. Phillip goes low, covers the spot for P2. They're still slicing and dicing with Andrew Farinage in a fixed car. Six laps down. He's back in the pack. Talladega is... It's a gift that keeps on giving. Harris into the lead. Harris into the lead. Davis into second. That's Jaron Winemaster still in third. The record for lead changes in a single race in the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series at Talladega, I believe looking at the stats earlier today was 51. I'm very interested okay. to see the number we're going to be up to at the end of this one because we ha are having a lot of moving around to the front of this field. Absolutely. If, if I have to estimate, I think we're 10 plus on lead changes already in this race. And we still got over half of this race to go and still a lot of racing to go as well. Post race, I'm very excited to see the uh, up of uh, the upload to Sim Racer Hub and see exactly what we're looking at in terms of adding to the stat book uh, of real Sim Racing Cup Series competition. But the field single files out for the most part. Agno Phillip is up here on the outside line. That is uh, the 19 of Bradley Burke on his tail. Uh, they're going to try and get by the 88 of Andrew Freenarge. I mentioned that he was six laps down. Brett Larson tries to go up and makes contact with Agno Phillip, pushes both of them into the wall. They save it. But that was a late move from Brett Larson trying to get up to that outside line. Uh, weird. It's really weird to see that being done. You know, I don't know if that was uh, a blocking move or trying to lead the toe or something like it or block uh, the, 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 you know, the pace from Philip that was flying around that top line. Finally, it got a little bit of a while after he got Farina, uh, he was trying to fly around that uh, top line. But uh, luckily, we did, luckily, we didn't have another big one. This has made a se second pack. It's not... They're calling it a second pack. It's a little bit of a stretch, I'll be fully honest. But it is a bit of a second pack. I mean, you see that front line. That's the top five plus... Uh, that's the top six with DeAndre Kane on the back bumper. Then you've got Thomas George, who is now leading this second line, which is almost shooting themselves in the foot a little bit here, going two by two. But uh, the, we've now got se separation in the field with this second line being led by Thomas George and that rest of the field in that single file line up front that we're now taking a look at with Cody Harris leading the way. I could argue this is not a, not even a you know shooting himself a shot in the foot. I think what you you could argue this is the tough but like a bug shot shot to the foot because why would you be leading you know trying to go for you know pack lead changes and things like that go two to three four wide nearly into some spot of the race and then lose toe and uh, and stop sharing draft the guy with the guys that in front of you. Clearly they're catching but. Uh, they, they nearly didn't make it work for a little bit right there. So top six separate themselves off as they look to try and pull away from that second group, which further back here on the Alabama gang super stretch is back to single file, trying to catch up to this lead group and trying to get the pack formed back up. This is honestly kind of what we've seen before. This is very much what we're used to seeing, especially here at RSR competition from the last couple of Talladega races that we've had. The field will spread out, admittedly, most likely after a green flag stop, but we're seeing it very early on in this, in this run here, in this green flag run that we're looking to have, where they spread mm -hmm. out, single file, and I don't know if they're buying time, waiting for pit stops, but it's not an awful idea 
because even with the drivers pitting everybody majority in the field pitting nine laps ago deandre kane pitting 16 laps ago i think they're still gonna have to pit again for fuel making it 74 laps unprompted full throttle nope. in the pack is not gonna happen nope never uh, and even if your car was a toyota prius they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to make it that's a great analogy <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes I shy myself in brightness and uh, and good analogies. Uh, moments ago, the 51 of Brett Larson tried to work his way to the pits. I'm not sure if it was a scheduled pit stop or unscheduled, but he's coming in hot, hot, hot. It's the brakes. It's loose. Car brakes. And he had a meatball flag that he had to serve. So this was definitely a... A good reason to come into the pit lane, but he does spin it out on entry. Of course, no caution. Well off of the racing line. But Brett Larson, not the pit stop he was looking to make in the first place. Not one to come down in the pit lane, but uh, also having to deal with that spin on the entry as well. He is still in the pit lane and will stay in the pit lane for, I'm assuming, a considerable amount of time if he has a meatball flag that he has to serve. Uh, that second grouping that we talked about with Thomas George is starting to slowly catch themselves up. Uh, Thomas George trying to catch to the back bumper of DeAndre Kane. Uh, that is P6 and P7. 1.1 seconds the gap. And that front pack is starting to pull away a little bit more now. 1.2 seconds as they race down the super stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And... Uh... And one thing we we have to keep notice, I was looking at the laps right here. Um, do, uh, the, the thing is, Harris leading the whole pack. That is really good to see, right? But uh, more importantly, the entirety of the field was catching up bit by bit. You know, so it's like two, three tenths of a second. This be, having the bigger group is allowing uh, Thomas George and everybody else behind to catch up to the front to, to the front six. And they are now catching up close to the tail end of this group is that number 75 of Steve Soa. And I will give him his due right now here on broadcast because he is running in a very good spot for him. Top five right now. 52 starts in the Full Throttle Cup Series. Uh, has never won a race in there. You see the drivers to the outside. That's Thomas George in that entire second line who has caught up to the lead group. They look to try and shake things up here in the lead pack. George looks for the lead. Help from uh, not lead lap car 88 of Andrew Farinaj on the outside. And he does get the lead with help from his Ford Mustang teammate. And now everything's going to get a little bit crazy. As George goes to the lead, followed by Cody Harris up on the outside. And Mariah trying to follow through. You know, everything just... Now all quiet right there. Actually, it's not Harris, it's actually Bradley Burke, but uh, two lines not working with each other, basically in tandem, same number. So uh, it's going to get interesting to see how this one fiddles out moving forward. Even the Farinars is the leader of the pack, even though, and he's six uh, laps behind. Andrew Farinars in that number 88 is a, a very big... <laughs> It's going to be a very weird analogy as well. Very big eyesore here in the pack. Uh, of course, the all black number 88 Ford Mustang. It's about all you can see in this lead pack. But trust me, uh, he is not on the lead lap. He is up here in the pack, mixing it up with the lead lap cars. But he is not racing anybody in this pack. He scored P22. Outside line prevails for a moment with... Uh, help from Bradley Burke to the back bumper of Thomas George in the six. And we are now within about 14 laps from that halfway point and the halfway bonus, which second time this season, we're going to get to see the halfway bonus come into play on a super speedway track. Remember, top 10 earn points for the halfway bonus. So There's going to be a fight around that top 10 spot, which right now it's Braden Whitaker and Grant Davis. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see, you know, everybody else, Grant Davis, Grant Davis and, every, and everybody else, you know, recovering a little bit. But, uh, and uh, Davis somehow survived the whole first three wide ordeal into this race. So, uh, you know that as the bottom line is not working as probably you wanted to work the this portion of the race, Josh. And I think uh, good, the good thing is we're seeing in the track, I think everybody just calmed down a little bit, you know. 
took its breath, know that the race is going in a little, in a little bit more calm fashion, and now I think they can go for a cool big uh, reflection. I did say the average amount of cautions per race in the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series of all time at Talladega is three. They are currently at two. Hoping we don't have to hit that uh, <laughs> average number and uh, anybody that took the under might be able to uh, cash out their winnings tonight. But I'm going to finish talking about uh, Steve Soa here for a, a second because he does work with me at Monster Jam and has competed in the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series for a while. And I just wanted to finish giving him his due, running here in the pack in the on the lead lap as well, looking for his first ever Real Sim Racing Cup Series win um, this week, uh, having to use another co-worker of mine at Monster Jam, Trevin Valderrama, who also competes in the Real Sim Racing Cup Series from time to time, having to use his setup, practice for two hours tonight, just for this outing here at Talladega, having it acclimated to a different size steering wheel, different pedal style, uh, not his normal chair, uh, not used to the sequential shifting that he also has to use, and different audio cues in the sim that he's used to so a lot of different different things going on for steve soa tonight and how about this lorenzo running inside the top 10 against a very very eclectic and very very good group of drivers looking for win number one could come tonight here at talladega yeah it could, could be rewarded with a really good one and uh, not in the worst of spots in this entire of the grid you know i we we often talk is being in the front is really good for this kind of plate racing but because everything kind of you know kicks off the final laps and at the and, and else you know sometimes being in, in the back of that pack can be rewarding especially at the bottom of the pack because all the cars you know filled on out into the top lane so uh, definitely father roma can actually you know be rewarded with a win over here if all goes this way and uh, with a spice of chaos thrown in the middle started shotgun on the field as well avoided that first yellow flag and avoided that second yellow flag and now running still in this lead pack with brain and gas behind we're back to three by three in the middle of this grouping three cars pulled away at the front lapped machines ahead as well that's kyle trudell and dylan coil coil will go one lap down for the first time uh trudell is going to go two laps down Field uh, settles out to two by two as they try and put those two lap cars behind them here. Uh, mainly, maybe next lap, maybe the lap after, but Thomas George holds on to the race lead. And now back upstairs is Austin Coop back leading the outside line where we saw him earlier on tonight. Absolutely. So I I'm just wondering right here uh, if uh, the number 53, what happened to Coop if he's trying to take that out top line, you know, just want to relegate himself to the back of the pack or uh, there's some potential damage on that uh, 53 car that is actually driving on so far. So interesting development with uh, basically half the race nearly ran already. He was caught up in that first wreck of the night. Um, and also ended up uh, claiming responsibility for that yellow. So he did get an end of the longest line penalty. I heard an apology over the radio uh, from Austin Coop uh, when he was dropping to the back. So I'm not sure if he got pushed out of line. Uh, maybe everything just got a little bit too tight, pushed behind, slower car in front, and he just kind of had to dump his way out of the pack to avoid getting into an incident. But there was an apology towards Austin Coop. Uh, he did accept that apology and say basically, nah, it's all good. So not sure exactly what happened to Austin Coop, but he still has the draft and now will sit at the tail end of the longest line of this pack, which is the inside line. Bradley Burke will take Thomas George back upstairs. Same with Michael Loria as they try and cover off Cody Harris, who looks to the bottom to try and get some help from Jaron Wymaster and DeAndre Kane. And to the bottom goes Maverick Davis, gives one tap to the back bumper of the 28 and decides to stay in line. That could have been mortal because how quickly Davis went to the bottom line. Ooh. They keep it straight. We stay green back to turn one on lap number 41. Halfway bonus coming up here at the end of lap 47. Still dicing around at the front of this pack. Thomas George and Bradley Burke in command. 
as another Ford Mustang looks to the top of the racetrack. I believe that is one driver that is going to go at least another lap down, although I'm not sure exactly who that was. Oh, that was Dalton Randolph. New car, not used to his paint scheme yet. We'll, 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 we'll get there with Dalton Randolph. Hopefully it's one of the first of many for that number 28 here in full throttle real sim racing cup series action still george and burke commanding the front of this pack loria and cody harris side by side for now the third spot as lorenzo this is a little bit of uh, less relaxed than we saw earlier with all the the two packs single file but still relatively relaxed as we're not seeing a whole lot of uh, dicing around moving around but we are seeing two by two but pretty pretty relaxed pretty sanctioned two by two yeah it isn't the two by two that we saw prior to the first two yellow flags of the race doesn't it i think everybody just you know just taking a little bit easy we saw that uh basically a good portion of the grid got heavily injured you know got some aliens here and there from the from all the from all the hits but uh I think now they're thinking about the long run, about those final laps, you know, just be within this group. You have to be within this group, regardless if you're first place, if you're second place or all the way to back at like what, P8, P17 where Papadow is. So every place right now in the, in the field is important, regardless of where you are right now. Still two by two through this group, Harris leads the inside line where we've seen Cody Harris pretty much the entire night tonight, which is up front. Talking about drivers who we had not seen a whole lot at the front until right now. Got to talk about Bradley Burke, and he is up 21 spots from where he originally started the evening. And check out everybody in this top 10. Maverick Davis up 9, Sam Nieto up 14, Grant Davis up 5, Minazzi Major up 9, Michael Araya up 17. A lot of drivers who started close to the tail end of this pack are up now slicing and dicing for the race lead. Yeah, showing that uh, it's the nature of play racing right now, right? Uh, that you don't have to start at the front for you to be dominating. If it was like, for example, like Texas when we last ran around, maybe being at the front would actually be a little bit of a benefit move. But uh, in here, it doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you finish and where you want in the group when it comes down to the crunch laps. And uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of people that started in the back uh, being rewarded with top spots moving forward. Inching close to that halfway mark. Right now, top 10 is right about where that number two car is. That's Sam Nieto. Now, who is trying to cover off that 10th spot from to earn the halfway points is the driver to the inside of Braden Whitaker. So that's the battle for 10th is the fifth row of two by two high speed pace laps going on here at the Talladega Super Speedway as we have two laps remaining this time by for that halfway bonus and we'll put half of this Talladega Ooh. race behind us they're getting Nancy at the front Davis got loose Thomas George trying to cover off two spots as well he goes from the bottom to the top Covers the spot on Burke. Will he go back down to cover the spot on Harris? I think he wanted to, but his iRacing spotter telling him inside right as they cross the line. Cody Harris now to the point. You know, you can even see now, I think that's, uh, you know, major that uh, trying to move up uh, a one lane, try to follow a suit with Whitaker and uh, from, and Cooper Small, but it's not getting the run. He probably wants to as we're going to be going into the halfway mark of, the, of this race. Remember, those halfway bonus points will be earned at the end of lap 47. Major starts a line, a third line up on the top of the racetrack. Dalton Randolph now in that third line sits in your P10 spot. Does he hold on to that spot? One more lap to go. These are the exciting stage finishes that we've seen in the real world. Well, it's an exciting halfway finish here in RSR Cup Series. One to go for the halfway bonus. We'll put half of this race behind us, this time by the start-finish line, and give the entire top 10 some much-deserved bonus points. DeAndre Kane now will be in P10 looking for those points. And Grant with a massive run down on the bottom. 
trying to get into the lead as George is going to now remain in that top side, but no work for the number 24 to try to get on through. Steve Soa goes into 10th with a considerable amount of position behind him. Top of your screen, you're seeing that lead battle. Bottom of your screen, you're seeing that battle for P10. Brandon Gas goes into 10th. Steve Soa will reclaim that 10th spot. Three by three, contact with DeAndre Kane and Brandon Gas at the line. Top 10, I believe when they crossed the stripe with Steve Soa, Braden Whitaker almost was able to take that 10th spot. But halfway bonus points were given at the stripe to George, Burke, Davis, Lorio, Winemaster, Maverick Davis, Sam Nieto, Cody Harris, Dalton Randolph, and Steve Soa. Half of this race is done. Uh, half of the field, er, or ten, the top 10, earn some bonus points on the evening. And we've got a battle for the race lead back on our hands with Grant Davis to the bottom, Thomas George upstairs. Yeah, and David's trying to get the run that pretty well probably wants it, but Wine Master trying to do the best do the best he can to get close, but George retaining some good side draft and uh, kind of blocking the number twenty-four progress onwards, but uh that's what we want to see, you know, cars you know being calmed down. Third lane feed being formed up top. I think that's Braden Whitaker that's trying to uh, make that third lane work once again. Dalton Randolph is up on Randolph. that outside line as well. Maverick Davis is there in tow. Nobody else really trying that third line just yet. I'm not sure how confident these drivers are really in that third line just yet. Got to remember, Lorenzo, uh, you, can, you can see it up on our scoring box. 46 laps still to go. 45 at the line. Still a lot that can happen. The typical tail of the tape when it comes to a Talladega race in the full throttle real sim racing cup series is if we see cautions early on we don't see the majority of our cautions until the last 10 to 5 laps and we end up going into overtime that's really when you got to watch for those yellow flags right now I think it's just buying time until we need to make those green flag stops which they pitted 30 laps ago through the majority of the field it's still got a little bit to go. DeAndre Kane is on the oldest uh, oldest fuel run, and he's only on 37 laps. Yeah, but, uh, but I think also DeAndre Kane is playing the smart game over here because he's still within, the, you know, this lead pack, has the longest run, like you just said, you know, retaining in that, you know, mid car. He's the fifth car on that bottom lane. And most importantly, he doesn't have to go full throttle, uh, which, you know, allows to save a little bit of fuel every lap that you go on. And uh, maybe you can save a lap or two here and there, but uh, it, it, it puts you in a good spot as the race winds down. Wondering if the strategy from DeAndre Kane, now that he is, now that he is mid-pack, is to try and at least save as much as, not to try and outrun anybody around him, but to at least pit with help. As they go by a couple more lap machines, I believe that was Dylan Coyle up top. I don't see any other lap machines. He's just going to trap. It looks like Agnel Phillip and uh, Mike Maddox up on the top of the racetrack. Uh, nowhere for them to go. Three wide in the pack. Coyle couldn't do much to get out of the way. But as I was saying, DeAndre Kane trying to save at least enough fuel to pit with help. Because you know at Talladega, Lorenzo, if you pit alone, you can pretty much kiss your race goodbye. You have to pit with help and... Right now, if I'm out there on the track, I'm starting to figure out who my friends are. When are they going to pit? Because whenever they pit is undoubtedly when I'm going to pit. You're not going to gain a whole lot by staying out on the racetrack. What you could lose, however, is your help off of the pit lane. Yeah, but and, and not only that, it's it would you would just say it's not a rule, right? That you're that you're saying you're coming into the pit lane. It's more like a uh, unwritten rule, a a, a, sport, a show of sportsmanship that you're coming into the pit lane, allowing others, you know, to inform of your current status. As now, I think uh, from the top lane, I think that's uh, Maverick pushing up. I'm trying to remember. I think that is Sam Nieto that is pushing on the top lane. Outside line, I see Cody Harris. I see, Cody I believe Harris. that's Maverick Davis in the 15. The Nazi Major in tow as well. Brandon Gass goes all the way up to the wall. 
Mike Maddox is behind him. This is the first true third line we've seen in this green flag run, but they all got to try and get by Thomas George, who has been leading now a considerable amount of laps from before halfway and after halfway. I think he's the guy that uh, led the most laps in the race. Arguably, you can make that statement. Definitely getting close. I mean, it's been a lot of laps now led by him at the front of this pack, mainly with that help from Bradley Burke. He's been a very good defensive driver in that second slot. Absolutely. And uh, and it's impressive how George is, is able to control the three lanes, right? It's it's scary good. It's, it's basically Jean, Jean Girard. Talladega and is good. Even though that uh, Harris now moves into the middle lane, now bottom lane is for the number 28. He's now into third place and with the chance on top of the lead. Hearing drivers pitting in this time. DeAndre Kane on the radio. Is he going to be the only one? No, he's not. Mike Maddox is going to follow him in. Only two, only two drivers, though. Yeah. We, we kind of expected the Kane to come in very early, not Maddox. But uh, now, question is with 40 to go, can you make it on 40? I think you can. It's, it's, I think there's just like just barely you can make about 40, right? We're going to find out. Now we can expect. I don't think majority of the field is going to start coming in soon. They might try and stretch it. If DeAndre Kane stretched it to a full tank, then he made it 41 laps. So I think he's mm -hmm. good to the end now. I don't think anybody else is going to come in for a while. I think they're going to try and stretch these fuel tanks out as much as they can to try and uh, be prepared for overtime finishes. Because DeAndre Kane, if he's right at the end of his fuel window at the checkered flag, he's not prepared for possible uh, one, two, uh, up to three overtime attempts that we have. Absolutely. And, and uh, now, and now it's basically it is the point that you think you have to think about the fuel, how long you really want to go, how risky you want to you want to be with your fuel efficiency. I think right in front of them is even Maddox and uh, and, and and Kane that are right at the front, the first front cars right in front. So they're about to be cut up to the sleep pack. Of course, they're gonna get the lap back unless something more drastic happens. field also that time by has kind of blown apart a little bit harris and maverick davis now your top two thomas george dalton randolph manazzi major top five major up on the outside line is that's the 51 of brett larson the pack is going to speed on by brett larson now goes five laps down as he was in the pit lane trying to get damage repaired had a meatball flag we saw him spin coming into the to, to the pit lane no caution from that spin as it was all self-contained in the pit lane harris out front bottom lane separates dalton randolph giving a big gap to thomas george but Nazi major almost makes contact with him and randolph has to go underneath the yellow line and blend back up and survive the whole ordeal uh that would have been disastrous for the number 26 you know random trying to get a better result to try to you know uh make a little bit of a comeback after you know the bad result he had at taxes on his uh rsr cup debut single file now for the majority of this pack manazzi major still leads the outside line help from Still, the six lap down driver of Andrew Friedarch in the 88. He'll blend back to the bottom. So now this gives us, I believe, one long train. Oh, no, it doesn't. A couple of drivers on the outside line. Looks like leading that group is Brandon Gass. He's got Steve Soa behind him. Andrew Friedarch up front. Austin Coop, Brett Larson. So they've got a little bit of help on the outside line now, but five cars strong versus i believe about 15 on the bottom not going to do them too much good yep. 
Uh, but they're, they're not going to lose a whole lot of ground because of the side draft, which is going to help them a little bit. But also opens up the door if anybody wants to, you know, get funny, try to get out in that top lane. Like, for example, Dalton right now, if he wants to, you know, oh, let me just try to slingshot out around the outside and bring for Eners, uh, a behind you, bump jab to get into the lead. But of course, we have to think about 36 to go, going to 35. Not the, uh, not the, uh, not the time of the race if you want to do that already. Oh, Patterson. Uh, wait, Randolph coming in. That's a pit stop from seven drivers. George Randolph, Winemaster, Major Gas, and Whitaker are all in. What does this do for this pack now? This is Cody Harris leading the way. Maverick Davis, Bradley Burke, Grant Davis, Steve Soa, top five now on the racetrack. When do they come in? Do they all come in together? Are they going to come in in fragments? With 35 to go, especially if we stay on this green flag run, don't get a caution soon. This is going to be a very fragmented pack as that grouping that just came in is now exiting. And yeah, the rest is coming in. They are all getting down into pit road speed. Winemaster is going to be the leader of that first pack that came in. Dalton Randolph behind, but they're spread out. This group that just came in, if they can get out of the pit lane, more formed up. Take a look at how fragmented they are on the top box, Lorenzo. Yeah, gas way back to Randolph. Randolph is going to catch up to Winemaster, but two don't make it a whole lot over here. Winemaster in the net race lead. That entire pack came out together. They try and get up to speed. It's not Harris who's leading anymore. They have to wait to the blend line on the back straightaway. Grant Davis leads this group. They are about to meet in the middle. They were too fragmented. There's the blend line. There's Jaron Winemaster with Randolph behind. There's your lead group. And that second grouping, Lorenzo, did it almost perfectly. They came out together, stayed on the racetrack together, and now they are your lead pack. And the Davis is uh, being the, the guys that led all the way, pushing each other just outside of the, uh, the, the, the pit top, the pit stop lane, going outside and uh, everybody else just working together, you know, just thinking about the numbers, the field numbers. Surely, Ymaster and Randolph, good line. They're going to get caught up by Coop and Soa, but I don't think it's enough gap for these guys to get away for four seconds. Four seconds over here is a lifetime. 33 laps remaining with Grant Davis leading the way. Maverick Davis behind. Sam Nieto, Bradley Burke, Michael Araya, your top five. Check in with a second pack. This is from seventh on back. Winemaster, Randolph, Coop, Soa, Gas, Whitaker. They sit in the second line. Out of turn four, they go. Middle of the trioval for our lead group. But this line here in the front is only seven, six cars deep. Six seven. cars in front, six cars on the timing screen, seven cars in actuality as there is, who's that lap machine that is in this group? That's Agnel Phillip who ended up going Phillip. one lap down. Yep, yep. So uh, it's going to be seven because I think that's Dylan right there. Hello, Dylan. As I think he's going to rejoin the frame and make the life easier for everybody on this lead, on this lead pack. I think this is going to make the life of the lead pack much more you know, manageable given the fact that the guys at the back are in bigger numbers. I think uh, from seventh all the way back, you would you estimate what? About eight cars that are on the second group? I would have shown... Uh Dylan Coyle um, from our Zoom cameras, but he gave me his camera for 20 seconds and then turned it off. And I haven't seen it since before Dylan. we started the broadcast. I, re I really wanted to use his camera, use, his, uh, use him as a new race reporter. I didn't even hear from him before the broadcast. Like, he normally will check in with us pre-broadcast. Didn't hear that either. I I'm ashamed of Dylan. 
Man, I'm truly you think you, you think you know, know somebody? Not me and Dylan were closer than that. No, no, I know. I think I, th I, I want to say maybe his uh, soccer choices or the fact that uh, probably his Wigan uh, uh, in college racing probably didn't go it as uh, probably he wanted to be, but. Uh, you can make a whole lot of conspiracy theories about Bill in this race. Well, one conspiracy theory I can make is that he probably won't get to victory lane because he is three laps down P19. <laughs> uh, speaking of laps down, 16 drivers still on the lead lap. Uh, as far as drivers in a pack, uh, 14 of them, uh, 14 of our lead lap cars are currently in a pack with other cars. Uh, from there... <laughs> Uh, Mike Maddox, or Mike Maddox, one lap down, not in a pack. Agnel Phillips, same thing, one lap down. Uh, he is in this group, however, on the tail end. But the two other drivers that are on the lead lap, not currently involved in a pack, is Thomas George and DeAndre Kane. Now, Thomas George, an extra two seconds in the pit box during that last cycle of green flag stops. Not sure what happened, if it was damage or what went on with the six, but he has lost a considerable amount of time. And then DeAndre Kane, who pitted off cycle with Mike Maddox, uh, now sits still on the lead lap, uh, 49 seconds back from this lead group. So he's actually going to catch up to this line of, looks like Matt Danson back on the racetrack, 59 laps down in a group with Mike Maddox and DeAndre Kane. Hey, it doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you finish. He actually, <laughs> with 29 to go, has a chance to finish. Uh, Kato's still on the track. He's got a chance to finish, I believe, 24th. Philip Radijic is 45 laps down right now, about to be 46. He is in the garage area. Uh, Cam Patterson, same thing. He's now 48 laps down. Matt Danson on the racetrack. Might end up going 60 down, um, but as Ross Cato moves up a spot to 23rd, putting Radijic and Patterson in between himself and Danson, Danson might be able to make up two spots for P24, which is better than P26. Much better. I'm not going to complain. Right now, I, I think Philip at this point of the race, oh, Dave is uh, just thinking this is the, uh, the warm-up lap, I think. Uh, Maverick, I mean, uh, I think Philip is praying right now for a yellow fly because he's a lucky dog, and uh, and, and if if the if I think if I'm everybody in the pack thinking about you know maybe overtime, I think this is the point they're probably gonna come in and maybe just put a little bit of uh, dab on on the fuel so they can actually make to that overtime without thinking about the saving fuel at the end. Agnol also uh, is in a pretty safe spot as well for that free pass. Uh, Mike Maddox is the only other driver that is just one lap down. And this pack is about to catch up to his three-car grouping. You can see them right there at the bottom of your screen. So once the pack passes Maddox, uh, who sits P18, he will go two laps down, uh, putting Agno Phillip as uh, the one of the only drivers one lap down. I just explained all of that and realized that DeAndre Kane is also going to go one lap down, um, which will move him to the free pass car Unless Agno Phillip can get by him. And this front pack is now fragmented. And Agno Phillip is going to be behind him. Oh, but they're going to catch up eventually. There you go. There is Link Shotty already. They are faster. Much faster. So this is your current lead group as they will swallow the lap down three car group to the inside. Not much to report on from that second group that we've got a little bit further on back. Uh, still led by Jaron Winemaster. Still trying to catch up to the tail end lead lap car of the pack in front. That's Maverick Davis. And they're trying to catch that number 15. That gap now showing a considerable 7.3 oh that that is not going to come in down that's not going to come down at one point it was about eight to eight seconds at uh at the beginning of the lap this is only going to go up because the the front pack is working very well it's it's scary good how well they're working but uh just just be a little lookout you know uh 
I think uh, they're gonna have to rely on a yellow flag for them to make it on through as Agno and, uh, the K and, and Kane are battling for the free pass. This is the battle for the free pass spot. If we were to get a yellow flag, Kane has that spot on the inside. Philip has no help to his name other than the 38 of Matt Danson behind. These two have raced together a lot. They have battled for race wins. They have battled for championships. And now they work together here at Talladega. What was that saying Larry McReynolds had uh, about uh, the old tandem drafting at Daytona and Talladega? Cooperation, where you yeah. have to work with your competition, cooperate with your competition. Yeah, and so you, you got to work with your competition, but at the same time, you're battling against your competition. It's kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend, if you think about it. So Kane and Philip has now fizzled out as DeAndre Kane has Mike Maddox in between himself and Philip. Philip gets another run at it through the tri -oval. He looks to the outside. We'll continue to try and keep a small eye on that lucky dog battle but at the front it's still grant davis sam nieto behind bradley burke michael Oria, cody harris through to your top five 23 laps to go it'll be 22 this time by and the energy is going to start to ramp up we're going to reach that crescendo but the big question is will we see a late race yellow flag very common to see late race overtime yellow flags here at Talladega in the full throttle real sim racing cup series. It's almost not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we're going to see that final yellow flag. Because honestly, Lorenzo, I don't think we have seen the final one yet. <sighs> and, and George gets slapped, but uh, he gets slapped in a, in, in a way that I thought that was actually going to have a crash between him and Harris. I know Phillips gotten by uh, DeAndre Kane, at least for the moment, in that lucky dog battle. Harris falls it to the front nose of the 94, and Agno Phillips going to give him as much of a shove as he can, as much of a shove as Matt Danson can give him. Trying to make that outside line work. Not a lot to do, though. It's working. Oh, boy, it's working. Now you can see even George joining the fray now. The number six is going to catch up to these three. All that 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 top line, I think, is the line that you want to be uh, moving forward. Side by side, now for the race lead, back to turn one. Harris upstairs, Grant Davis downstairs. Three cars strong, make it four, make it five, make it six on the outside, five on the inside. Battle for the lead goes the way of the. Ohio State Buckeyes fan Cody Harris in the 28. Agnel Phillip one lap down. Matt Danson 60 laps down. Help Cody Harris get to the front of the pack. Yeah, it, it was long overdue that thing coming in and, and, and they saw, okay, that top line is where top lane is working. Oh, let me just have a piece of the pie because you can see now there's George, there's the Andre Kane trying to get through the lap that Agnel Phillips is putting on, but the Phillip with his runs in the bump drafting just working, but uh, there are other ideas. There are other ideas being taught by the number six. Back down the Alabama gang, super stretch. Harris builds a considerable gap in between himself and Grant Davis with Agnel Phillip in between them. Big shove coming to the back bumper of Grant Davis. That's Sam Nieto behind in the two. Jaron Winemaster on the Irising voice chat as well. Lorenzo says we're catching them now. And that is truthful. 6.2 seconds and now falling. But is it enough though? It's, 19 it's, to it's, go. They need to make quicker work of it, but I'm not putting them out of the range out of the range just yet. All right, I think there's only one way they're probably gonna catch these guys in the front pack is if Grant Davis, Loria, Burke, 
and Maverick Davis and Wire Masters start thinking, you know, more aggressively. They need to, you know, oh, let me just try to move up to the front. I don't want to fill up just in between me and the rest. Like you can see, Davis to the outside. They need to have more battles for the lead. If they don't have more battles for the lead, they're never going to be able to catch them unless the L flag comes out. Ross Cato upstairs, 47 laps down now. He lets the field go by. Damage to that. Number 12, Ford Mustang. But 18 to go up on the board. 5.4 seconds the gap now between the two packs. Here comes Davis. Davis with a massive run on the outside lane, but uh, still no shot of getting closer to the number 28. There is a lot of vehicles in this lead pack that are either one lap down or more that are I don't want to say affecting this lead battle but it is something that these drivers need to think about because Matt Danson at the front of the pack is not on the lead lap Grant Cody Harris is your current leader he sits second Grant Davis is second on the timing screen he sits fourth in this pack and now that they're back to single file Checking in with that second pack again. 5.6 seconds and now growing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, the try, the, the attempt of swapping out the places and the broken lines and the broken runs, I think uh, that's what made the, this entire line fill, fizzle out into a single line. You need to see there's, can you argue that uh, there is a little bit of desperation from Harris trying to push dancing up in front so you can actually try to break away a little bit more and more and more? I will say, if a caution comes out, that throws a wrench into this entire thing. But totally. if Harris is trying to plan on this going green to the end. It's a good idea to have as many lapped machines kind of guarding you as you can. And that's exactly what Agnafel and Matt Danson are doing. But Davis is tired of sitting around to the outside. Help from Nieto to the race lead at the line goes Davis. Yeah, Combs are all also with the number two of Sam Nieto. Outside being pushed by him, Bradley Brick following suit. Side by side with 16 to go. Nieto tries to give another shove to the 24. Does he pull down to the bottom? Does he keep helping Grant Davis? They're back to side by side. 5.4 seconds the gap. Now to the second line as they make their way halfway down the super stretch. And not only that, now Kane is the one that gets a free pass right now. He passes Angel Phillip, even though they're nearly still side by side. 15 laps to go this time by. Still waiting to see if we're going to see another caution or if like we were in the fall of 2023 and of 2021, we're going to finish this race under green and at the scheduled distance. Second pack, 5.7 seconds as they go back to single file up front. Davis, Nieto, and Burke, and Lariah, top four in this pack, top four on the racetrack. Now that advantage that Harris had with all the non-lead lap cars around him, that's now a disadvantage, Lorenzo, is he is trying to get by now all these drivers to get back up to those leaders. Uh, which is insane to think about him, but there's a really good run on that outside lane. And now George is going to make it a 4 4. He can actually work better than just three cars moving forward. But Maverick Davis is not finding himself in a really good tight spot. I think right now Davis has a really good shot at this race, but that's still 14 laps to go. There's a lot for you to consider on through. If you're one of these drivers in the middle of these packs as well, I have to think you're thinking in the back of your mind about the overtime, about trying to save at least a little bit of fuel. I mean, if you're Sam Nieto right now, chances are he's not full throttle. Same thing with Bradley Burke. Same thing with Michael Lariah. Grant mm -hmm. Davis is full throttle all the way around this racetrack, saving almost nothing. If he did not get or if he, when he pitted, if he doesn't have enough fuel to make it through one, two, maybe three overtime restarts, we could start to see some drivers falling out of this pack if we do end up getting overtime. Yeah, the question is, uh, can, can you even argue that maybe one overtime might actually do it? 
because I I want to I would bet my money just one overtime would actually be enough. April of last year, about a little bit less than one year ago, we did finish under only one overtime restart. Finished at 98 laps, four over the scheduled distance of 94. With 12 to go this time by the stripe, this lead pack is still 6.3 now ahead of the second pack, but they're also getting antsy. Top mm -hmm. four, these lead lap drivers is here comes Matt Danson to the outside. He's got Cody Harris in tow. Danson might not be on the lead lap, but Harris is. Uh, and they're they're gonna get closer. They're using the side draft as a little bit of a push. And you can even see Grant Davis blocking the lane. Sam Nieto on the on the bottom lane. Davis goes high. Danson has to go all the way up to the wall. Davis is gonna lose out on the lead. Nieto will go to the point. Matt Danson leading the outside line, really just serving as a train engine, trying to pull Cody Harris to the front of this group. He's got Maverick Davis behind. Harris goes to the middle. Davis follows suit. Danson goes back up to the top of the racetrack and gives Cody Harris your race lead. Se second pack, 6.7 seconds back. They're not gaining quick enough with 11 to go. No, they're not. Like I said before, they're going to have to rely on the L fly. That's pretty much it. That's that's it. And at that point, where do we see that yellow flag come from? Is it from that pack that is back here, single file, trying to catch up? Or is it this group that's slicing and dicing for the race lead as Maverick Davis looks to the bottom? Harris looks high. Now help from Thomas George, another one of those lap down machines. He's looking for the free pass as well. He's racing Agnel Phillips to try and hold on to it. And now he's going to give the run to Maverick Davis, even though Agnel Phillip and Matt Dancer are trying to push him around on the outside. Well, 10 to go. Welcome to no man's land. Everything can happen now. All bets are off. Harris on the outside is on the lead lap. By the way, second group has started to show their hand and now quickly falling again they gained for about a half a lap while they were really two by two that has fizzled out now to a disorganized bottom lane and a couple of cars up top majority of which are not on this lead lap that's the two middle cars philip and Danson. Cody Harris, who leads the way. Maverick Davis goes to the middle line. Thomas George on the bottom will let them race through. But first place is Harris. Second place is not going to be until the 24 of Grant Davis. That is behind the 94 and the 38. Yeah, and Burke in third place. Now into single file one more time. It's now just biting the time. Maybe they've broken off in the second group thinking, oh, maybe we got a yellow flag over here. It's about to happen because they're, they're those guys that need to make up ground. They're going to get aggressive and because they need to work together. Right now, is this the best place for you to work together? They've single filed up again, this time all the way up on the outside line. 6.2 seconds that gap to the second grouping. Steve Soa on the back bumper, Jaron Winemaster. They've been single filed throughout this entire green flag run from the moment they came into the pit lane under the green flag pit stops. Jaron Widemaster over the radio saying, Lorenzo, he thinks it's just too little, too late to catch him. He's hoping for a yellow flag now with eight to go. Well, it basically just confirms what I said. They need a yellow flag. And I'm just wondering who's going to meet the first move over here. In my opinion, I think Burke. My, uh, or, or, or even Laraya might actually make the first move to try to move to the bottom lane as well. We're seeing the Buckeye fan of uh, Cody Harris. Looking for his first race win of the season. Harris leads the way. He has buffers in between himself and Grant Davis with seven to go. Single file in this lead pack. Single file in the second pack. 
with Agnel Phillip and Matt Danson separating Cody Harris and Grant Davis. He's got to do something. He goes low. He's got Bradley Burke, Sam Nieto, Michael Araya, and more Everybody. in tow. Here comes Grant Davis for the race lead in three. Oh, there's contact between Ben Burke, Burke and Nieto touching the back of Burke. So everything could have just unsaddled right there as now Grant Davis into the lead. Grant Davis takes the lead of the race. Burke behind, Nieto behind as well. This race has become one for the lead lap car. Six to go as they race back to turn one. Second gap, 4.9 seconds make it five even. They're not gonna have enough time without a yellow flag, but if this pack blows apart, That'll change the entire course of this race. Down the super stretch, they go again. Yeah, 100%. Now, the question is, who's on the bottom lane on that top four? Is he going to move up on Cody Harris and try to make it a one more lane? Because uh, if you allow Harris to go on through, not only you're leading his pack, you're leading everybody else. I think Nieto wants to do that. There you go. Nieto goes topside. Five to go at the line. He's got help from Cody Harris. Davis on the inside. Burke behind him with help. Side by side at the line. Nieto has a run. Nieto takes the lead. Five laps to go. Back to turn one. Now Harris with a massive push around turn number one to get loose. Side by side. Three wide. Davis in the middle. Harris goes back to the race lead. He's got the lap machines of Phillip and Danson still behind him. And the pack has lost their momentum. They're going to have to try and regain all the momentum they gained on Cody Harris before. Maverick Davis goes to second. He goes to the outside of Matt Danson to take one more lap machine out of the fight. Insanity. This is just insanity. Maverick Davis to the bottom. Harris tries to protect the outside. Grant Davis moves up the racetrack. He goes to the outside line. Right behind Agnel Phillip. Looks for a space to go. Has to get out of the gas. Bradley Burke falls into the clutches of Matt Danson for a moment. Three wide. Maverick Davis in the middle. Thomas George down low. Down the super stretch. Harris still leads the way. Phillip in second. Grant Davis in third. Looks for momentum. Looks for a spot. Boom. Burke's in the wall. Somehow we make it to still green. Philip on the inside brings Nieto and Danson with them. Lap machines in tow. That's going to help Sam Nieto to the inside of Cody Harris for the race lead. He gets stopped by those lap machines in front, though. Danson and Philip trying to control the pack and trying to control this win. Nieto goes to the race lead, passes Cody Harris, who gets stuck on the outside line. But Nieto still retaining the lead. Brings Grant Davis, Bradley Burke with them. Everything can ensue. Cody Harris trying to find a line to work through. No line to work whatsoever. They single file out for a moment. Harris loses a ton of momentum. He falls on that outside line way to the back of this field. Nieto, Davis, and Burke now your top three. Phillip goes back to the outside. DeAndre Kane's there. Here comes Nieto to the top side. Thinks he's got a better chance leading a line as now Grant Davis will get trapped behind Matt Danson. If we're going to see this yellow flag to tighten up this group, get the lead lap cars out front. It's going to have to come over the next one lap. Two laps to go. Once that white flag is out, the next flag will be the checkered at the line. Nieto still leads the way. Big head of steam for Michael Oraya. He slams the back bumper of the two. And now they make contact with the wall or Ryan in the wall. Still lapped cars on the bottom. Nieto leads the race in the middle. Grant Davis in second now on the inside line. He'll get the lead by inches. Big shove from behind. That's Maverick Davis. Gets Grant Davis loose. Davis looks high now trying to clear the pack with Nieto and Cody Harris trying to get a run going. Maverick Davis on the bottom is going to take the lead. Now blocking the lane of the number 24, Maverick Davis. Everything can basically fiddle themselves out. We're about to go one to go here. Remember the 94 and the 38 on the inside. They are not on the lead lap. Grant Davis back to the point. Phillip going to duck out of the pack. White flag. This race is official. We will finish with a checkered flag. 
Davis leads the way by a few car lengths. Maverick Davis, Sam Nieto, three wide in the pack. Matt Danson, 60 laps down. He is not in a play. Sam Nieto, big hit of steam down the super stretch. He gets a big shove from Michael Oriah. It's not enough to clear Davis. What does Bradley Burke have? He looks to the middle. Cody Harris in tow. Nieto and Loria stall out on the outside line. Grant Davis gets loose from a shot from Danson. Here comes Bradley Burke. He's going to make contact with the 38. Is it going to be anything for the 24 of Grant Davis? He looks high to try and cover. Now looks to the middle. Three wide. Here comes Nieto at the line. Bradley Burke, I think. Yes. The 19 goes to victory lane at Talladega in a photo finish. Wow. What a finish. Five wide to the finish. Four or five wide to the finish. And nearly Nieto. I think I would argue if he had a, about 10, 5 more meters, he probably would have had this race. Insanity. Bradley Burke for Get Wet Esports goes to RSR Victory Lane. His first win in RSR competition since, I'm still trying to find the stat, since Las Vegas from earlier on this year, he makes it two wins on the season now. And that finish coming to the line the pack blew apart, not in a wreck, but just ultimately everybody fighting for real estate, all they could do, and all they ended up doing was giving Bradley Burke the win. This is the replay. Burke yeah, up top can. had the momentum with Nieto's help and Grant Davis trying to come up and block. My question is, if, if Davis was on his line, probably would have had the one the win, in my opinion. But I don't know if I digress on this opinion at, at all. Bradley Burke will celebrate win number two on the season for him and his Get Wet Sports Chevrolet Camaro in an absolute thriller to finish out the night here in Talladega. Let's take a look at your full race results by six one thousandths of a second. Bradley Burke is your race winner. Sam Nieto, Michael Oraya will hear from your top three in the post-race show. All three for Flat Out Esports, by the way. Cody Harris and Grant Davis round out your top five. Maverick Davis, Eric Papanow, Brandon Gass, Manazzi Major, and Dalton Randolph will round out your top ten. Eight out of those top ten, all in Chevy Camaros. Brandon Whitaker, Austin Coop, Jaron Winemaster, Steve Soa will round out the drivers that finished on the lead lap. Thomas George, DeAndre Kane, Agnel Phillip finished one lap down. And then from here, drivers that finished two or more, Mike Maddox, Andrew Freenage, and Dylan Coyle will round out your top 20. It's Brett Larson, Ross Cato, Kyle Trudell, Matt Danson, Philip Radicic, and Cam Patterson. That round out your full race results. And everybody now can take a collective exhale, Lorenzo. What? Ooh a finish and we, i've seen exciting finishes from the full throttle real sim racing cup series at talladega before this is just par for the course 100 percent. i would argue this probably is from real sim racing uh, you know the best finish in talladega not because of you know uh, how close they finish because talladega whenever you get green flag finishes it always it is always this chaotic and close but because you had so many stuff not only had the battle for the lead you also had a battle for the lucky dog of sorts of course it wouldn't count for anything but he probably would have been on the lead lap of sorts but it was exciting nevertheless to see that happening and uh, unfortunately nieto back-to-back -back races where he, basically he misses the mark he also play racing again nearly missing the mark of, of a win here at rsr Waiting to hear from race winner Bradley Burke. Probably still celebrating uh, out there here in Talladega.
But we will get to talk to Michael Loria, who is your third place finisher tonight in the number 44 Sim Speed Shop Chevy Camaro. And Michael, third place for you tonight, but from starting all the way back in P20, I would have to think this was a solid effort from you and the rest of your Flat Out Esports team to get yourself up here on the podium. Yeah, I'm just thrilled for our team. Um, honestly, we've been really good about executing strategy the past few years at at these uh these types of tracks like talladega and daytona um but always something would happen in the race whether an untimely caution or, or just a wreck when we we're sitting in a really good spot to kind of just derail our efforts and we have finally had one of these things go our way perfectly um so it feels really good on that front we we executed perfectly and um it was just really fun to be able to race it out at the end there um the only thing that's a little bittersweet is like you know who who's gonna win as a teammate uh but uh you know it, honestly with how hard these races are just getting one of us into victory lane uh at these types of tracks is something special and as well for you in that race i mean we saw you d dyson up at the front was it there's a lot of work with your teammates. I mean, Flat Out Esports being one of the biggest teams in real sim racing competition. Is that what you were focusing on tonight? Working with your teammates and getting all of you up to the front at once instead of, you know, one of you getting up to the front, then trying to find each other. Was it really a team effort for all 94 laps? Oh, yeah, I would say 100%. Um, just kind of with opting not to qualify to stay near each other um get on the same same uh thought process for pit sequence and fuel um yeah just a total team effort honestly and we uh what really was key for us was being able to execute on that green flag pit stop and just having a nice buffer for a lead and just kind of you know watching that gap within our relative making sure that we were doing our jobs as uh pushers and you know just all the stuff that comes with being efficient in the draft and uh you know coming down to the last few laps there we had such a big buffer that okay it's go time we get to race it out but uh you know we had a we had a few uh other drivers in the mix there so we couldn't be uh you know totally uh lackadaisical there we really had to pay attention and make sure that we were going to come home with a flat out win and uh you know we did a really good job and i'm just happy that we were able to make it really interesting at the end without wrecking each other too because man it was close at the line but we all did a good job. D Dover up next and still a lot of racing left to go be before the playoffs. Where's the confidence level at heading into Dover? Obviously not quite a team a team racing track, but still comes into play as we go racing on more high banks. Just instead of 2.66 miles, we're at about a one mile sh short track. Yeah, I think we'll be solid as a team. Um, definitely, we're all capable of top 10s, no problem there. Um, at least speaking for myself, I feel like Dover is one of my better tracks. Um, I'll be disappointed if I don't get out of there with a top five finish for sure. Um, but we'll have to see. I'll we'll have to see um, what has maybe changed with the setup and maybe what iRacing has done with the whole dynamic track uh, condition. So um, I haven't run a race at Dover in a while, so it's going to be interesting to see what we got there. Well, congratulations to you on your third place finish. Congratulations to all of Flat Out Esports on a great effort here tonight from Talladega. Michael, congratulations once again. Thank you for joining us here, up here in the broadcast booth. All right. Thank you very much. Great to hear from Michael Araya comes home P3 in uh, top one, two, three for Flat Out Esports. Lorenzo, we'll get to second place Sam Nieto first before we speak to our winner tonight, Bradley Burke. But you're standing by with the two. Absolutely. So, Sam, uh, here, here we go. Another race, and you, you, you nearly get in there. It was just about thousands of a second, but coming from the back, getting that P two back to back P two in in uh, in Texas in here must be a, uh, must be pleasing. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? I, I hope that was as much fun to broadcast as it was to race. I uh, usually don't have a whole lot of fun in these things, but man, that was a blast. No, we definitely have fun. We can tell you, like, Josh, I think he nearly lost his voice. I had a lot of fun as well. Mind blown uh, how you guys were, you know, door being in and all. But uh, talk, talk us through about how this race went for you, because I think it transpired in a whole lot of things, you know, fighting uh, with the guys up in front, 
but also kind of you know ducking it out with Danson and and, and Philip, who are you know kind of fighting for the lucky dog with other drivers like uh, uh, you know the Kane and, and DeAndre Kane and other drivers. How how that went for you? Yeah, that uh, Agnew and uh, Danson kind of added another element to it that uh, you usually don't get. That was that was fun. Um, yeah, what I, what I'm most proud of is that uh, you know on all of these play races. You, they always wreck come to the line and you know we showed that you don't have to wreck um but uh yeah it was fun um <clears throat> just riding around for a little while we were going to do an early pit um but caution came out and kind of uh took that strategy away and then it was just trying to you know get up towards the front um do a pit stop and see what happened from there we uh all of us executed great on the pit stop and came out together and we we were <clears throat> leading and and then it was just a battle between uh you know the flat out guys and um area 51 guys with two of their guys being a lot down so that yeah that was fun and 100 percent man and now uh next week we're going to you know dover the monster mile how do you prepare for that one mile track then uh that can get crazy uh, trying to be in the mid pack trying to climb up saving those tires how that will uh, go for you for 200 laps i don't know i'll probably do one test session and then and then uh race see where i'm at um dover has usually been a pretty good track for me but that doesn't really mean a whole lot uh chaos can happen so um i don't know we'll see what see how i feel after i do a little testing well, get your testing done. I celebrate this P2 for the meanwhile, uh, Sam. We'll see you next week at Dover. All right. Thanks. See you guys. Great to hear from second place finisher Sam Nieto tonight. And now we get to speak with your race winner in an exciting thriller finish from Talladega. It's Bradley Burke and Bradley for yet again this season. We get to talk to you up here in the broadcast booth with another race win and how good does this one feel? Flat out esports one, two, three, and getting it done in spectacular fashion in a three wide finish. Yeah, it feels good to put on a show like that. That was definitely, I would say, probably one of the most fun uh, super speedway races I've had, especially in this league. Um, it was nice for our team to finally finish where we feel like we deserved, and because due to past races, we had really good strategies and they just never worked out. But Definitely a lot of fun racing there towards the end with, you know, my teammates. Sucks I had to pass one for the win, but that's just kind of how it plays out sometimes. Well, now, of course, looking at the playoff standings, you get two wins. You yourself, Manazzi Major and Agno Phillip, the only drivers to win races this season. And, of course, that first win got you into the playoffs. This second win adds more bonus points heading into the playoffs. Are you focusing on that postseason just yet, or is it still trying to log those race results and run with your teammates at Flat Out Esports to get better collectively at each track? Yeah, I'm, it feels good to, you know, I want to rack up points wherever I can. Um, but right now I'm just kind of, especially with these two wins now, I'm just out there kind of racing for fun with my teammates, making sure I can help them in any way that, I can so they can get in victory lane as well. Moving forward to Dover Motor Speedway in one week's time. Where's the confidence level at there? Because you've got a win at Las Vegas. you got a win at Talladega. Dover is about as opposite as you can get from Talladega and Las Vegas. So is it going to be another opposite track that you get another race win, make it three on the year? Man, I honestly wouldn't mind it. Dover's always been one of my favorite tracks um, as long as I've been you know sim racing so um if there was any track i would like to get a win that would definitely be one of them um so we'll see what we can do up there look forward to seeing you in one week's time bradley congratulations on your race win go celebrate that one two three finish with yourself and the rest of the flat out esports gang C congratulations appreciate you guys thank you for the broadcast great to hear from all top three of your finishers and all from flat out esports tonight and lorenzo it's a end tonight and to look forward dover motor speedway in one week's time back here for round number eight on race spot tv that is in one week april 22nd 8 30 p.m eastern time where you can catch the full throttle real sim racing cup series but 
Lorenzo tonight at Talladega, and we're going to a completely different track at Dover, but the racing tonight was so exciting, and that finish is going to be one that we're going to be talking about for a while. We're, we're going to be talking for the rest of the season and even forward, which is insane to think about. Really good race and respectful among everybody, and uh, only two cautions, which is good on our books. Let's head on to Dover, which should be very thrilling as well. If anybody took the under on the amount of cautions we were going to have tonight uh, from the average of three, uh, you would be correct on that under. Only two yellow flags tonight, but as we put the Talladega Super Speedway in the rearview mirror, we want to thank all of you for tuning in and for my colleague Lorenzo Bonder in the booth with me tonight and for race control Joshua Mendoza. My name is Joshua Lee, and congratulations to Bradley Burke, who walks away with his second race win of the season here for the Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series. Every single race of the calendar is available right here, live on Race Spot TV on Monday nights. Until next time, we say good night from Virtual Talladega, where Bradley Burke is victorious.